Right, today we are going to talk about that how oxygen is transported from the lungs to the tissues where oxygen play a big role in metabolism, right? Now, let's start with the diagram, very simple diagram, here is your lung, fine? Of course, there are two, isn't it? You want me to draw two lungs or one lung? Two lungs, okay. So, suppose these are simple air spaces, right? Now, what really happens that here is your left heart, right? It is receiving the blood from the lungs. I think rather than two lungs, I'll make one big lung, right? That is much better proposition. Make one big lung, right? This is it. Let's suppose airspace. Now, from the right heart, blood is going to the lung, and from the lung, blood is going to the left heart. Is that right? So let's draw here right heart. Right ventricle. And this is the blood going to the lung. This is presenting pulmonary capillaries. Right? If we start from here, left ventricle. Then there is pulmonary artery. After the pulmonary artery, there are pulmonary capillaries. And after the pulmonary capillaries, they continue and eventually they can convert into pulmonary, yeah, pulmonary veins. Is that right? Pulmonary vein bring the blood to the left heart. Right? All of you must be knowing that between the right heart and the left heart, there is pulmonary circulation. Is that right? Then, blood from the left heart, this is arterial blood. This is arterial blood, right? It is going through the tissues. Let me make a very big muscle. Okay. This is a muscle. Suppose, let's suppose our arterial blood is moving to the muscle right and in the muscle naturally it will go into where into capillaries it will go into capillaries first from major arteries and then the arterioles and then into capillaries right and from the capillaries eventually it will be drained into yes please when you then veins and veins will eventually drain to the major venous drainage system right now what we need to learn in this diagram is that how oxygen let's suppose this is your oxygen right what we have to learn today is how oxygen from the alveolar space is going to the blood right and how blood transport oxygen from the lungs through the left heart, through the arterial system, eventually to the systemic capillaries. And in the, from the systemic capillary, oxygen is supplied to the tissues. And of course, carbon dioxide is picked up from there. And then carbon dioxide is taken back through venous system to the right heart. And right heart pump carbon dioxide loaded blood to the lungs. And in the lungs, carbon dioxide will be lost out to the alveolar system. And again, blood will gain more oxygen right so we have to learn all this process step by step fine now one of the major role which is played by the most important role in the transport of oxygen is played by a very important uh, protein called hemoglobin that is uh, hemoglobin so first i will talk about the structure of hemoglobin right who is good at structure of hemoglobin raise your hand you are good at structure of hemoglobin. Okay, you draw on your copy, I will draw on the board. We will compare later. Right? Okay. So, let us come back. Now, what is the basic structure of hemoglobin? Actually, hemoglobin synthesis start with, what is this structure called? Pyrrol ring. What is it called? Pyrrol ring. Actually, four, four pyrrol rings are assembled together you know this occurs in the erythroblast 
you know, erythroblast eventually make RBCs. So within the erythroblast, this is erythroblast, this is nucleus of erythroblast. Of course, this erythroblast is in the bone marrow. So within the erythroblast, first of all, there is synthesis of pyrrole ring. This pyrrole ring, right, four pyrrole rings are put together and now this structure is called, yes please, proto -por firin. What is the structure called? Protoporphyrin. Now this protoporphyrin I can represent in a simple way like a very decent, what is this flower? This is protoporphyrin structure or simply we call it porphyrin. Now in the heart of porphyrin you put iron. What you put? Iron. Right? So protoporphyrin plus iron and now this structure is called Yes, him. The structure is called him. Again, you take the pyrrole ring, put four, four pyrrole ring in a structure that is called porphyrin. In the heart of porphyrin, you put iron and that is called him. Then what you do? That cell will synthesize a peptide chain and this beautiful flower should have one peptide chain. And this peptide chain, of course, made of amino acid and this is called globin so heme plus this peptide chain peptide chain together they are called it is called yes hemoglobin complete the name hemoglobin monomer it is not the complete hemoglobin it is just hemoglobin monomer is that right am i clear to everyone now let's go to further detail of hemoglobin structure because we have to talk about hemoglobin it's most important molecule which transport oxygen right now what are the different types of hemoglobins again you will tell me rapidly what is the structure yes please or firing what is this now it is heme and what is this peptide chain globin chain now actually there are many different types of globin chains which can be synthesized in erythroblast right now if we make let's suppose this is erythroblast this is its nucleus this is a gene to synthesize alpha globin chain this is a gene to synthesize beta globin chain there is another gene to synthesize gamma globin chain there is another gene to synthesize delta globin chain this concept should be very clear in every erythroblast there are genes multiple genes which can make different types of globin chains is that right now alpha chain alpha genes are all the time active so what really happens that this is your yes another heme and with this heme, there is one more alpha chain. So alpha, alpha. These are now, this is one hemoglobin monomer, this is another hemoglobin monomer. Yet it is not complete molecule of hemoglobin because one hemoglobin molecule is tetrameric. One hemoglobin molecule is tetrameric. So it is not a complete molecule. It needs two more arrangements and Let's suppose with it, now gene is expressing beta. So beta chain and beta chain. Now this structure is one hemoglobin molecule. This is one single hemoglobin molecule which consists of four hemoglobin monomers. And this hemoglobin molecule should be called, it has two alpha chains plus, yes please, Yes, to beta chains. Such hemoglobin molecule is called, yes please, hemoglobin A. Why we call hemoglobin A? A stands for adult. This is adult hemoglobin. That if I take, I hope all of you are adult, right? So if we take your hemoglobin and study their alpha different peptide chains, that most of your hemoglobin will, molecules will have two alpha chains and two 
beta chains. So this type of hemoglobin which has two alpha chains and two beta chains, this is called hemoglobin A. A. Then there is another hemoglobin which is also present in very small amount in adult that is called hemoglobin A2. In that hemoglobin what really happens there are two alpha chains again now I will make it rapidly. There are four monomers and remember alpha chains are always there alpha alpha but this time in the second molecule uh, alpha rather than beta chain there are delta chains you know this gene is expressing delta chains and this molecule of hemoglobin now this molecule is different than that of course I should not forget to put what is that iron right now this is a hemoglobin tetramer this is a hemoglobin tetramer it is two alpha this is two alpha but this is two beta and that is two delta right when with two alpha there are two beta we call it hemoglobin a but when with two alpha there are two delta we call it hemoglobin a2 we call it hemoglobin a2 is that clear then another important type of hemoglobin you are supposed to know is hemoglobin f fetal hemoglobin right which is present mainly in the fetus right now fetal hemoglobin is again okay i will make the structure and you will tell me i think it's not difficult to remember these flowers everywhere and again what is there here yeah alpha chains are there and what is added now gamma chain in the fetus this remember alpha is alpha gene is expressing throughout alpha gene expressed for adult hemoglobin for hemoglobin a2 as well as hemoglobin f the difference is in other genes when with alpha there are two beta this become adult with alpha with two delta it become adult two when with alpha there are two gamma it become fetal right so we'll put two gamma so what is the structure of fetal hemoglobin is that there are two alpha plus there are two gamma am i clear so this was the first uh, discussion that when we talk about the transport of oxygen the most important molecule which is involved in transport of oxygen is hemoglobin and we must know hemoglobin molecule single hemoglobin molecule is a tetrameric molecule right and every uh, monomer is made of one heme component and one globin chain heme component is made of porphyrin ring having iron in the center and iron which is present here is always in which form ferrous form you have to remember iron in the heme portion should be in ferrous form not in ferric form the iron should be in this form and not in this form if in hemoglobin in heme component if iron is not ferrous rather it is ferric then hemoglobin is called met hemoglobin have you heard of met hemoglobin so what is met hemoglobin simply a hemoglobin molecule in which iron has been changed from its ferrous form into ferric form is that right and once iron changes from ferrous form to ferric form then it does not bind oxygen so it's a useless hemoglobin right met hemoglobin is useless hemoglobin because it does not bind oxygen oxygen bind only with the ferrous form is that clear now another important thing hemoglobin molecule is highly toxic molecule if hemoglobin molecules are free in your circulation hemoglobin molecule will leak into kidney tubules into nephron and damage your nephrons they are highly toxic molecule so nature has packed the hemoglobin in rbc membranes so that hemoglobin molecules don't produce toxicity to the body is that right so this is an rbc and it should be having millions and millions of hemoglobin molecules right 
in my discussion i will show hemoglobin molecule in a different way let's suppose this is one pocket where oxygen will bind this is second pocket where oxygen will bind this is third pocket where oxygen will bind and this is the fourth pocket where oxygen can bind so in one hemoglobin molecule how many pockets are there four pockets right so rather than making this structure i will show the structure in a simple way here like this one pocket second pocket third pocket fourth pocket this is our hemoglobin right actually hemoglobin is not like this but hypothetically this structure which is the true hemoglobin i will be showing like this and this is the pocket where which should settle oxygen should settle so actually this pocket is heme component what is this heme component and in this pocket at the bottom of this pocket there must be iron in the ferrous form is that right so now symbolically i'm making hemoglobin molecule in this way and it has four pockets into which oxygen is supposed to fit in is that right now let's come over here now we start our proper lecture on transport of oxygen we know that oxygen should be transported mainly in the pockets of hemoglobin which is present in rbcs of course right now let me make one rbc here i'm making the rbc black colored do you have any objection right and hemoglobin i'll make inside red color and this is one pocket second third and fourth pocket okay this is one hemoglobin molecule is that right now what really happens that we know that oxygen should transfer from alveolar space to the plasma and from the plasma to the rbc and within the rbcs it should bind with hemoglobin now the question is that what is the force which what is the uh, force which moves the oxygen from alveoli to the plasma and from the plasma to the fluid of rbc and from the fluid of rbcs to the hemoglobin molecule that is the partial pressure of oxygen you know gases are moving from higher partial pressure to lower partial pressure is that right now what really happens that partial pressure in alveolar space partial pressure of oxygen yes is who knows what is the normal partial pressure of oxygen in alveolar space what is the normal partial pressure of oxygen in alveolar space anyone it's very easy to remember just say 100 just say 100 100 is difficult to remember just 100 to be very exact it is 104 but don't try to be that exact and forget everything let's suppose that partial pressure of oxygen here is 100 what millimeter of mercury this is the partial pressure of oxygen in later lectures we will discuss why it is 100 so for a while you just trust me i'm right the partial pressure of oxygen in the alveolar space is 100 millimeter of mercury is that right now what really happens that partial pressure of oxygen now this is the plasma this is outside the rbc plasma what is the partial pressure of oxygen in the plasma of the blood which is coming to lung who knows what is listen carefully about the question what is the partial pressure of oxygen in the plasma of the blood which is coming from the right heart to the alveolar capillaries that this this is 40 excellent very good unexpectedly 40 millimeter of mercury so we say that when mixed mixed venous blood you know venous blood which is coming here it is coming from many tissues so this venous blood is coming from multiple tissues we call it mixed venous blood when it is reaching to alveolar capillaries right this blood pulmonary arterial blood but it is deoxygenated it has a partial pressure of oxygen 40 now at the partial pressure of oxygen at the partial pressure of oxygen 40 i'm going to make now rbc here this is your rbc and these are these four pockets 
right i say that partial pressure of oxygen here is 40 millimeter of mercury at this point let's suppose before reaching to the alveoli when pressure of oxygen is 40 oxygen is pushed to the rbcs and at this pressure out of four pocket one two three and four pocket how many pockets are loaded with oxygen who will tell me at the pressure of 40 millimeter of mercury partial pressure of dissolved oxygen because listen oxygen is present in the blood in two form number one oxygen which is dissolved in the fluid like in the plasma and oxygen which is bound with the hemoglobin right when we say there is partial pressure of oxygen partial pressure of oxygen is produced by only dissolved oxygen write it down somewhere that oxygen which bind with hemoglobin does not contribute to partial pressure oxygen which is bound with the hemoglobin does not contribute to partial pressure the partial pressure of oxygen which is present in the plasma or blood fluid that is completely determined by the dissolved oxygen right oxygen is present here in two form number one dissolved oxygen number two oxygen which is binding with the hemoglobin this oxygen molecule which is binding with hemoglobin does not determine partial pressure partial pressure is determined by dissolved oxygen this may be dissolved in plasma or this oxygen may be dissolved in the fluid of rbc right but this is not bound with hemoglobin now my question is this this concept is very easy that if you increase the partial pressure more hemoglobin will load on the hemoglobin molecule again if you increase the partial pressure of oxygen more oxygen will bind with the hemoglobin is that right yes. and if you decrease the partial pressure then oxygen will jump out is that right now listen when partial pressure is 40 this number you should remember because all of you right now sitting comfortably resting human beings have partial pressure of oxygen 40 in the blood which is coming back to the lungs right my question is that at the pressure of 40 millimeter of mercury how much how many pockets of oxygen hemoglobin are loaded with oxygen you think two okay anyone else three. you think three pockets your concept look there is someone here with a concept there is a lady here who says that when partial pressure is 40 then it means three pock three pockets are already loaded with oxygen so your concept is when hemoglobin molecules are coming back to the lung already they are loaded at three points anyone who differs with her raise your hand who who differs from her there's a lady here with the name of irene lambras <laughs> and she claims that when partial pressure of oxygen is 40 right listen when partial pressure of oxygen is 40 then she says under this pressure in normal hemoglobin out of four pockets three pockets are already loaded with oxygen this is her concept personal and private concept and who differs raise your hand you are alone all of you you are also differing with her what do you think how many pockets are full you think two pockets are full what about you two pockets what about other people one okay people who believe one pocket should be full raise their hand these are very much wrong people who believe two pockets are full they are also wrong the lady is right this is a very important concept listen carefully attention please attention please listen carefully in a normal resting person when hemoglobin come back to the lungs to get oxygenated already it is oxygenated 75 percent this is a wrong concept that venous blood has no oxygen is that right so at the pressure of 40 millimeter of mercury of course pressure of oxygen three pockets pocket number one pocket number two pocket number three three pockets are loaded with oxygen only it means what is the saturation how how much 
what is the percentage of hemoglobin saturated with oxygen at the pressure of 40 75 percent is the saturation so now listen carefully when a mixed venous blood comes to the lung in the mixed mixed venous blood partial pressure of oxygen is 40 millimeter of mercury and under the partial pressure of 40 millimeter of mercury out of four sites three sites of hemoglobin are still loaded with oxygen so hemoglobin saturation is 75 percent is that right now so you can say this is oxygen transporter you can imagine this is hemoglobin car when hemoglobin car come it's a four seater it's a four seater car three passengers are already there it is coming for how many passenger here only for one it loves to keep its level four seater so what really happened as soon as hemoglobin molecules within the rbc's reach to the pulmonary circulation into pulmonary capillaries they are already loaded with three oxygen molecules at pocket number one two and three and 75 percent saturation is already there only one 20 uh, only 25 percent of the hemoglobin need to be saturated now pressure here is 100 right here is 40 so naturally oxygen molecules will move from high pressure to low pressure and very rapidly oxygen will start moving right in a healthy person from where to where from alveolar side to the capillary side and from the alveolar air space oxygen will shift immediately to in the capillary where in the plasma first this is the point to remember it will not directly go to the rbc or not go directly into hemoglobin first oxygen will come into plasma right until pressure become equal both sides oxygen will keep on coming from alveoli to the alveolar capillaries until pressure here also become partial pressure of oxygen is 100 is that right now when partial pressure of oxygen is 100 here when partial pressure of oxygen is 100 here then more oxygen will enter into of course rbc and under this partial pressure more oxygen will bind with hemoglobin and now hemoglobin becomes saturated at all loaded with the oxygen at all four pockets so this is how it will happen this was alveolar surface oxygen shifted from alveolar surface from alveolar area to the capillary right this was your capillary from here when oxygen will shift here it will make the partial pressure of 40 millimeter of mercury to the partial pressure of 100 when oxygen will come down it will take partial pressure of 40 to 100 when partial pressure become uh, 100 millimeter of mercury under this pressure of course last site is also filled now we say that it is 100 percent saturated is that right so the concept which we have to make is that partial pressure of oxygen determines partial pressure of oxygen determines what is the level of saturation of hemoglobin with oxygen is that right now blood will move to the left heart when it is going towards the left heart right what is the partial pressure now you will tell me 100 millimeter of mercury oxygen hemoglobin is how much saturated 100 percent saturation is that right now we have to make another concept which is very important we know that this is the pressure of the dissolved oxygen and we know that all hemoglobin molecules are loaded with oxygen but we don't know that what is the exactly what is the amount of oxygen in 100 ml of blood now we have to calculate another thing that let's suppose this is column of blood from here up to here and this blood which is moving okay 
this amount of the blood let's suppose it is 100 millimeter of mercury sorry 100 ml not pressure it is a volume let's suppose this is 100 ml blood is that right and originally this 100 ml blood came to the lungs it get oxygenated 100 ml then it moved forward now we have to see develop another concept what is that concept we have to see that in a healthy normal person 100 ml of the blood can carry how much amount of oxygen because up to now we only say pressure of oxygen is 100 millimeter of mercury we only say all the hemoglobin is loaded with oxygen but we don't know how much total oxygen is there in 100 ml right of course oxygen transporter is hemoglobin if there's more hemoglobin in 100 ml amount of oxygen will be more and if hemoglobin is less in 100 ml of the blood then amount of oxygen will be less so we have to develop one more concept that under the pressure of 100 millimeter of mercury with hemoglobin 100 percent saturated what is the capacity of blood what is the capacity of blood to carry oxygen and what is the real amount of oxygen there we'll calculate that any confusion up to now no confusion maybe you are not listening to lecture some people who sleep well during the lecture somehow they never get confused okay now we'll talk about let's suppose this is a not a blood vessel this is 100 ml blood okay i'll make a simple diagram you must have seen the beakers let's suppose in this beaker we put 100 ml blood right and here we apply a piston which is pushing the pressure and here is oxygen let's suppose the pressure with which oxygen is pushed into this is 100 millimeter of mercury right so partial pressure of oxygen right is maintained at 100 right and we know whatever amount of let's suppose these are the hemoglobin molecules we now know that under this pressure all the hemoglobin molecules will be 100 percent saturated right now if i ask you that with 100 percent saturation how much total oxygen can be carried in this 100 ml of the blood it depends on amount of hemoglobin and also capacity of hemoglobin to bind with oxygen is that right now experiments have told us that one gram of hemoglobin one gram of hemoglobin binds if it fully binds 100 percent saturation at 100 percent saturation binds 1.34 ml of oxygen now one gram hemoglobin when it is 100 percent saturated can hold how much oxygen 1.34 ml is that right if this can stick to your mind now we can think of another thing in a healthy person let's suppose our this patient circulation is a healthy person circulation normal person healthy person in 100 ml of the blood how much hemoglobin he has healthy person has how much hemoglobin in 100 ml of blood you never count it please tell me 15 gram everyone should know right there is a range female are usually having around 14 grams hemoglobin per 100 ml of the blood males have a little more is that right i will not discuss the causes anyway so if we talk about this patient now listen carefully in this particular patient there is 15 gram hemoglobin per 100 ml of blood per 100 ml of blood now listen we have taken this 100 ml isn't it this is 100 ml amount of blood which is going to travel throughout all the way back 
राइट वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी डायनामिक्स इन दिस दैट बोलस ऑफ हंड्रेड एम एल ऑफ ब्लड हाउ मच हिमोग्लोबिन फिफ्टीन ग्राम वन ग्राम कैरीज वन ग्राम कैरीज हाउ मच ऑक्सीजन वन ग्राम हिमोग्लोबिन कैरीज वन पॉइंट थ्री फोर एम एल ऑफ ऑक्सीजन कैन यू कैलकुलेट दैन फिफ्टीन ग्राम हिमोग्लोबिन इफ इट इज हंड्रेड परसेंट सेचुरेटेड इफ इट इज हंड्रेड परसेंट सेचुरेटेड फुल लोडेड विल है फिफ्टीन इंटू वन पॉइंट थ्री फोर एम एल ऑक्सीजन दैट विल बिकम अबाउट ट्वेंटी पॉइंट वन एम एल ऑक्सीजन now what did we learn we learned this thing right now that if this 100 ml blood with 15 grams of normal hemoglobin has its hemoglobin fully saturated then the total hemoglobin which will be loaded on sorry total oxygen which will be loaded on hemoglobin is 20.1 ml is it clear no problem in this it means but remember one thing that there is some more oxygen there because even though most of oxygen is loaded on hemoglobin right this is for hemoglobin pocket 1 2 3 4 but there is some oxygen which is dissolved in plasma that is also present in this 100 ml so it means in this 100 ml blood some oxygen is present in plasma some oxygen is loaded on hemoglobin so oxygen is in two form hemoglobin bound oxygen which does not play a role in partial pressure and dissolved oxygen oxygen actually if we combine these two that will tell us total oxygen we have calculated how much oxygen is bound with the hemoglobin now we must calculate how much oxygen is present in dissolved form is that right okay oxygen dissolves poorly it is not highly soluble gas oxygen is not highly soluble gas right for example oxygen dissolves 0.003 ml oxygen dissolves in 100 ml 100 ml blood under pressure of 1 mm of mercury partial pressure of oxygen listen you are putting a pressure and under that pressure some oxygen will dissolve and most of oxygen will bind is that right the oxygen which is binding we have already determined that when pressure is 100 mm of mercury 100% saturation of hemoglobin occur 1 g bind 1.34 ml if it is 15 g total will be 20.1 ml oxygen which will be held with hemoglobin clear now we have to talk about dissolved oxygen under partial pressure of 1 mm of mercury only 0.003 ml oxygen dissolves it means oxygen is not very soluble and when pressure is 100 you multiply it by 100 and how much it will become if you multiply by 100 0.03 ml what does it mean it means that if you have 100 ml blood attention please if you have let's suppose this is blood column it is 100 ml blood partial pressure in this oxygen partial pressure is 100 mm of mercury only 0.3 ml oxygen will be dissolved but 20.1 ml oxygen will be held with hemoglobin so total become about 20.4 so it means most of the oxygen which is present there is not the dissolved form most of the oxygen is present in hemoglobin bound form is that right normally in your blood right now in arterial blood 97% of the oxygen is bound with hemoglobin only 2 to 3% oxygen is present in dissolved form am i clear to everyone no problem up to this but even though dissolved form is only 0.3 ml 
but you should not underestimate its importance because this small 0.3 ml is responsible to create the partial pressure of oxygen in the plasma is that right clear now another thing when blood is moving now listen carefully when how much blood, uh, we have loaded oxygen here 20 ml with this hemoglobin and 0.3 ml in dissolve about 20.4 is that right this concept clear to everyone now we have another concept little modification to bring this concept near the reality the reality is this that blood which is moving through the lungs through alveolar capillaries that gets oxygenated but there is another circulation in the lung lung has two circulation one circulation is pulmonary circulation and other is other is bronchial circulation the two circulations in the lung one is pulmonary circulation other is bronchial circulation actually bronchial arteries look supply the deep structure of the lungs and they supply the oxygen and bronchial arteries eventually go into bronchial veins and look here these bronchial veins drain into what is this drain into the blood which is coming from the lungs now listen this blood through pulmonary circulation blood which is going to the left heart it is oxygenated but the blood which is mixing from bronchial circulation that is not oxygenated again listen carefully lung has two types of circulation one circulation is that blood is coming from the right heart passing through the lungs and gas exchanges occur and after uh, loading the oxygen uh, that blood is going to the left heart but lung bronchi bronchioles and other deep structure of the lung also need their own blood supply for that nature has provided the lung with a small miniature circulation which is called bronchial circulation this bronchial circulation supplies oxygen to deeper tissues of the lung and then bronchial veins bronchial veins drain into the blood bronchial veins which bring deoxygenated blood they drain into the vessels which are bringing fully oxygenated blood from the lung this will lead to mixture of two blood fully oxygenated blood and deoxygenated blood because fully oxygenated blood is very big amount deoxygenated blood is very little so there is a little drop in oxygen pressure here again listen this blood which is coming from the alveolar side it has a partial pressure of 100 and this blood which is coming from bronchial veins that is a partial pressure of veins which is 40 millimeter of mercury so th these two blood mix before they reach to the left heart and when this venous blood at mixture occur thank god fully oxygenated blood is in large volume and bronchial blood is in small volume so this poorly oxygenated blood and fully oxygenated blood when they mix the partial pressure drop from 100 millimeter of mercury to 95 millimeter of mercury is that clear it means that when blood is moving from this side forward what is the partial pressure of oxygen here remember no oxygen is lost on the way because there is no uh, oxygen going to the tissues so blood when blood is moving from here forward and because this blood and this blood has mixed so partial pressure will drop to 95 millimeter of mercury is that right anyone who could not understand this concept raise your hand anyone who could not understand this that why partial pressure of 100 millimeter of mercury drop to 95 millimeter of mercury within arterial system everyone is clear strange you are clear about it that's good I don't know in this hypoxic environment you can understand so well right now partial pressure of oxygen has dissolved oxygen has dropped from 100 to 95 due to mixture of deoxygenated bronchial blood mixing with the pulmonary blood pulmonary 
venous blood. This is pulmonary arterial blood. This is pulmonary venous blood. That is bronchial venous blood. And both of them, when they mix, the term which is used is venous admixture. In the book, somewhere it is written, if you read, that there is venous due to venous ad, admixture. Admixture means mixture, mixing. Due to venous ad, admixture, the partial pressure of oxygen dropped from 100 to 95. Right? Now, when partial pressure of oxygen will drop, do you think oxygen will remain, uh, hemoglobin will remain 100% saturated? No. Under the pressure of 100, you keep hemoglobin 100% saturated. One partial pressure of oxygen becomes little less, then hemoglobin becomes a little less saturated. Right? We say that saturation, look, pressure drop from partial pressure of oxygen has due to that event has dropped from 100 to 95 clear and percent saturation drop from 100 to 97 again i will tell you don't worry these are pockets of hemoglobin before pressure was how much 100 under the pressure of 100 it is 100 percent full it is 100 percent loaded but when pressure become 95 it is about 97 percent full am i clear no problem up to this it means attention please it means that total amount of oxygen which was supposed to be 20.4 ml that will drop down is that right we can say approximately 20 ml oxygen is carried by 100 ml blood again let me repeat it what is happening look here it was fully oxygenated this was less oxygenated when both of them mix do you think in every 100 ml of the blood oxygen content will go up or down content of oxygen will go down so from 20.4 it may become 20 ml is that right now i will sum up this thing and then i will come to the tissue let's sum up now you will tell me there's 100 ml blood which is entering this is a suppose bolus of blood right 100 ml blood from here up to this and it is going to enter into from arterial side to capillaries now you will tell me what is the partial pressure in this yes partial pressure is 95 partial pressure is 95. 95 and what is the dissolved dissolved oxygen 0.3 ml what is the dissolved oxygen coming here 0.3 ml and what is the oxygen with hemoglobin uh, okay what is the hemoglobin saturation percent saturation 97 and what is the amount of oxygen here content of oxygen total about 20 ml look the total capacity was slightly more but it is loaded with less than its full capacity because when oxygen is 100 percent saturated we say it is saturated to full capacity when it is 90 percent saturated it is uh, loaded with slightly less than full capacity you just imagine that you have a container which can hold 20 ml but if that container is not 100 percent full that is full suppose 97 percent you will say there's a difference in capacity and the content this point is important let me explain let's suppose we can put 100 ml or 20 ml any substance fully at 100 percent full 20 ml this is the capacity of this container but if you don't fool it rather you fill it up to 97 percent so we say content will be less than the capacity same is true about 100 ml of the blood 100 ml of the blood has more capacity but due to this mixture content is less than its full capacity is that right when we talk about what is the capacity of 100 ml of the blood to carry oxygen capacity mean what is the maximum amount of oxygen which 100 ml of the blood can carry just a minute when i say tell me the capacity of 100 ml of the blood to carry oxygen i mean 
that what is the maximum capability of blood to hold the oxygen and when i say tell me the content of oxygen then i'm asking okay fine whatever it is whatever is its capacity tell me how much is really there right so on arterial side of the blood capacity and content are very very near to each other because it is 97 percent full any question up to this there's no question now this will reach to the capillaries is that right what happens in capillaries systemic capillaries that these are tissue cells now tissue cells are all the time utilizing oxygen tissue cells are all the time utilizing oxygen you know they use the oxygen and burn some glucose and fats and produce convert adp into atp right and during this oxygen is being used because tissues are metabolically using oxygen so in the tissue pressure of oxygen is going up or down down is that right in most of the resting tissue not for example if you're dancing around that's a different situation but if you're comfortably sitting in your resting muscles the partial pressure of oxygen is around partial pressure of oxygen is around yes 40 millimeter of mercury is that right i will draw that structure here Then what is happening now let's suppose this is a capillary right this is the 100 ml this was the blood which was entering now when blood enters here this is rbc is that right you are supposed to tell me what is happening here partial pressure of oxygen is 95 at entry point we'll see what is happening at entry point in the capillaries and what is happening at exit point this should be the concept now partial pressure of dissolved oxygen is this what is the amount of dissolved oxygen 0.3 ml per 100 ml of the blood 0.3 ml of oxygen per 100 ml of blood no need to write it but anyway now in the hemoglobin under the pressure of 95 hemoglobin saturation percent saturation is 97 is that right so most of the hemoglobin is loaded with oxygen is that right clear to everyone and content of content of oxygen is how much in 100 ml of the blood which has a hemoglobin of 15 grams and partial pressure of 95 total content of oxygen is 20 ml please these are the three parameters which you have to talk about arterial side at exchange side at venous side and alveolar side what are these three parameters number one what is the partial pressure of oxygen at any point number two what is the what is the capacity of blood to have the maximum hemoglobin uh, oxygen in it number three what is the saturation of hemoglobin number four what is the a true amount of oxygen really carried so we have said it from the arterial side when blood is entering into systemic capillary partial pressure of dissolved oxygen is 95 amount of devolved, dissolved oxygen is 0.3 ml per 100 ml of the blood and if person has 15 grams of hemoglobin per 100 ml of the blood and under this pressure it is about 97 percent saturated so it is about 19 point some 19 point suppose 5 or 6 ml oxygen total hemoglobin bound oxygen plus dissolved oxygen is approximately 20 ml so content of oxygen in 100 ml of the blood is 20 ml now it come to the tissue now we come to your this beautiful muscle black muscle now this muscle is okay first it is resting right if it is resting still it needs some oxygen to run its normal basal metabolism when muscle cells are using oxygen naturally within the muscle cell let's suppose this is muscle cell oxygen level will be low usually oxygen level in the your body tissue is somewhere between 15 to 40 millimeter of mercury millimeter of mercury 
this is the partial pressure of oxygen because tissues are using oxygen so within the tissue oxygen level is 15 to 40 now what is the pressure here 95 what is the pressure here 40 now here pressure is high i'm writing 95 here 95 is the partial pressure here 40 is the partial pressure in the tissue naturally oxygen will move from high pressure to low pressure from the dissolved oxygen now listen don't tell anyone that oxygen from hemoglobin jump there no first first this is the dissolved oxygen which is even though in very small amount dissolved oxygen shift from capillary plasma to the interstitial fluid and from the interstitial fluid oxygen shift to the cells again what is happening cells are metabolically active they are constantly utilizing oxygen partial pressure of oxygen in the cells is very low so oxygen is constantly shifting from interstitial fluid to the cells so oxygen level in the interstitial fluid is also low usually it is around 40 millimeter of mercury right when arterial blood come when oxygenated blood comes into capillary fresh blood come into capillaries that is having a pressure of 95 here is the pressure of 40 so oxygen moves from dissolved state of plasma to the dissolved state of interstitial fluid from there oxygen will move to the dissolved state of cell is that right now soon when oxygen will start shifting in this direction dissolved oxygen partial pressure of oxygen will drop here it will become equal to this partial pressure so as blood is oxygenated blood is moving through the tissue capillaries oxygen is moving from dissolved state of plasma to the dissolved state of interstitial fluid and the cells during this process partial pressure of oxygen from the plasma which is 95 drop to the partial pressure of 40 when partial pressure of dissolved oxygen become less under low partial pressure you cannot keep all the hemo oxygen sticking to the hemoglobin right so what really happens that as rapidly this pressure drop in the plasma right oxygen will jump out from where from hemoglobin now this concept let me make it more clear two three four four pockets were there this pocket number one oxygen two three and four now let me tell you the behavior of these pockets it's very important to understand actually if around this molecule this is a molecule of hemoglobin right now this is a molecule of hemoglobin which is deoxygenated and deoxygenated hemoglobin molecule has how many pockets open only one pocket open one pocket open other pockets are close this point is suppose I'm, now i'm not discussing this point i will come back to here i'm going to some very basic concept separate than this discussion let us suppose you have a hemoglobin molecule which does not have any oxygen it will have only one pocket open other pockets will be closed it means this pocket is ready to accept oxygen so we say this pocket is having high affinity for oxygen other pockets are closed it means other pockets are not having affinity for oxygen now let's suppose the partial pressure of oxygen in this area is zero if partial pressure is zero no oxygen is binding here no oxygen right of course partial pressure zero means there is no oxygen if there's no oxygen nothing binding there let us suppose that in this container we start increasing the partial pressure of oxygen if we start increasing the partial pressure of oxygen more and more oxygen will bind with these pockets is that clear it is just like that if there is no passenger no one sit in the car if the more and more passenger on the road more and more will try to get into public transport our public transport is four seater 
Is that right? Now, let's suppose you are taking the oxygen pressure up. When you are taking the oxygen pressure up, first of all, first pocket will get loaded. Now listen, as soon as first pocket, first, first pocket is what? The heme of heme with its iron in which form? Ferrous form. Heme molecule in the first pocket with its iron in the ferrous form except one oxygen. Right? As soon as it receives oxygen, it just touch the other one. Open your mouth. There is something coming. So, second open. Second open, but third and fourth are still sleeping. So, what has happened? When one is loaded, it increases the affinity for the second. Now, if you take the pressure up, second will accept the oxygen. When second become loaded, it alters the pocket of the next. And then next will open up its mouth. And if you really increase further pressure of oxygen, this will also get loaded. Now, which has become loaded? Which pocket? Third. They are very cooperative with each other, but selfish also. First they fill their own pocket, then tell the next one, be ready, something is there. Right? Now, next pocket will open. And eventually, if pressures are high enough, like very high pressure, all of them will be loaded. So, this process in which when one pocket is loaded, right, it increases the affinity of the next pocket for oxygen. It means first is leading to cooperation with the second. And when second gets loaded, it cooperates with the third side to increase the oxygen loading. This is called positive cooperativity. What is it called? Positive cooperativity. I think I have to write it. Positive cooperativity. So, positive cooperativity is shown by the hemoglobin molecule. This is a funny molecule, it's just like four friends. Right? Or you can say that in this hemoglobin car, there are how many seats? Four seats. If one seat is full, the seat automatically, first seat automatically open the second seat. When second seat is loaded with passenger, second seat has a button which open the third seat. And when third seat become loaded, automatically which seat open? The last seat. It means that when one site is oxygenated, it increases the affinity of the next site for the oxygen. Am I clear? No problem after this? Really? Now look. In the beginning, when oxygen was, when hemoglobin was totally deoxygenated, now this is the very sad hemoglobin, you can say. No oxygen. So, only the first one pocket is open. At this moment, out of these four pockets or four sites, only one site has high affinity for oxygen. Other sites don't have affinity. But when one gets loaded, it increases the affinity of the second site for the oxygen. Then first and second both get loaded, they activate the third site. When three get loaded, they activate the fourth site. Now you have to use your brain and tell me the answer. There are four friends together standing. When first gets stimulated, he stimulates the second one. When first and second both are stimulated, both of them together stimulate the third one. And third also becomes stimulated. Don't think of wrong things. All three of them stimulate the fourth one. Who is most stimulated? Fourth one. So, the end result is that when oxygen becomes fully loaded on all four sides, maximum affinity is shown by the fourth side. But in the beginning process, maximum affinity was shown, shown by the first one. Again, let me repeat it. When there is deoxygenated hemoglobin, only first site is having the full affinity to bind oxygen. As more and more molecules bind and occupy the sites, the sites which are loaded, which activate the next site. And eventually the last site becomes the most heavily affin heavy affinity for binding oxygen. Am I clear? Yes. There is no problem. Another relationship. I will draw here and then I will come back to this point. Let's suppose I make a simple graph here. I am going to draw it hypothetically. Right? Let's suppose 
that you have a beaker here and in it there is a lot of hemoglobin, right? And you are putting pressure and with pressure you are adding oxygen there. With the piston you are adding pressure. Now, here you are progressively increasing partial pressure and more and more pressure will add do oxygen saturation of hemoglobin percent saturation again listen you are having hemoglobin some amount of hemoglobin in a container and you are exposing that hemoglobin to progressively increasing pressure of oxy oxygen as you keep on increasing the pressure of oxygen the saturation of hemoglobin will become progressively more is that right and what really happens at the pressure of 100 let's suppose this is the pressure of 100 and at the pressure of 100 this is the point at the pressure of 100 it is 100 percent saturated hemoglobin is 100 percent loaded with oxygen this concept is clear no problem up to this if hemoglobin was a simple molecule and it is not but if hemoglobin was a simple molecule it will behave like this you keep on increasing the pressure you keep on getting more saturation so actually if hemoglobin was a simple molecule it will go like this what is this linear relationship that as you keep on increasing the pressure there is proportionate increase in hemoglobin saturation when you study from point 1 up to point suppose 100 when you study in this direction you are studying that how pressure is leading to association right and if you keep on decreasing the pressure saturation will keep on decreasing and it will move like this is that right hemoglobin is not so simple it does not follow this rule this graph is wrong but why i draw it because i have to tell you what is the special thing about this graph of true graph first you think if it was a simple molecule at pressure of 100 100 percent saturation at pressure of 50 there should be 50 percent saturation at pressure of 25 there should be 25 percent saturation it is not like this it is really not like this right actually hemoglobin behave in a different way have you seen some people who are uh, philanthropist what is the definition of a good philanthropist he should be a person who should grab where he finds the money he should grab as much he can grab he should become greedy and when he goes to the poor people he should give as much he can give hemoglobin molecule is like this let me tell you first for example i'm a hemoglobin molecule but i'm not interested in oxygen i'm interested in money just suppose this is the lung area this is the tissue area lung area is the rich people area and tissue is the poor people area i'm going to the rich people area here do you think i should give oxygen or take oxygen take. so my behavior should be snatch as much money as much i can so I should become greedy or I will not rob, I will not go by your advice. That is left up to you. Now listen, in a way, I have a tendency to associate money with me. I have a tendency to associate money with myself. So when I go to the money rich area, I will show a strong behavior of association with money. I will take more and more money from there. Now I'm going to visit poor people. Is that right? there my behavior should turn into dissociation and when i see the poor people i dissociate more and more but when i turn back i should again become a strong associator strong holder of the money and here i should become a loose holder and more distributor hemoglobin molecule is like this it behaves in the lung in a different way it behaves in the tissue in a different way that is why the curve is not linear right because in the lung he, it molecule has more affinity to hold the oxygen right when hemoglobin is exposed to high pressure of oxygen its affinity to hold the oxygen is very very high 
and when it moves hemoglobin moves to the tissues which have low pressure. low pressure of oxygen there's a dramatic out of proportion fall in affinity of hemoglobin to hold oxygen and it loses oxygen that is how it work like a good oxygen transporter it will take from the oxygen rich area and give it to the poor area i will draw the curve and i will show you what does it mean i will explain now this is the normal curve what does it mean let's study point by point at the pressure of 100 it is saturated 100 percent it's easy to understand at pressure of 90 at pressure of 90 it should be saturated how much 90 percent no it's still 99 percent now listen carefully if it was a linear molecule at pressure of 100 saturation should be 100 and if it was linear at pressure of 90 saturation should be 90 at pressure of 80 saturation should be 80 but it is not like that here it is operating in the lungs because lung has high pressure so in the lungs at pressure of 100 it has saturation of 100 at pressure of 90 it has saturation of 99 at pressure of 80 it has saturation of 95 so it means it is not very willing to release oxygen it is keeping itself very well saturated it is not willing to be desaturated is that right actually on this curve if you look at that if you drop the pressure from 100 to 50 you are dropping pressure 100 to 50 right and when you drop pressure from 100 to 50 this drop is what is the 50 point this drop actually here is drop only 85 what does it mean that you have dropped the pressure from 100 to 50 but saturation has dropped from 100 to 85 it means how much oxygen is released only how much hemoglobin is desaturated 15 percent it means in spite of a big fall in the pressure it did not release much oxygen is that right now you come to this part of the curve if there is further drop of pressure from 50 to 0 from 85 to 0 it means between the pressure of 100 to 50 it loves to remain saturated and between the pressure of 50 to 0 it loves to be desaturated again let me explain if you have a hemoglobin in a container and you are applying the pressure of 100 all of the hemoglobin will be fully saturated if you keep on reducing the pressure you reduce the pressure from 100 to 50 only 15 percent hemoglobin will bubble out not 50 percent but if you remove the last 50 percent of the pressure 85 percent of remaining oxygen will bubble out it means that higher pressure it it desaturate little at lower pressure it desaturate very rapidly so it means at higher money pressure it's like that man at higher money pressure of the rich area it loves to remain saturated and at lower money pressure it loves to desaturate and deliver am i really clear no problem up to this right now let's truly study this graph actually in this graph first of all you should understand that pressure is 100 on arterial side or lung side pressure is 100 at arterial side or lung side so this is the curve at lung when hemoglobin come to the what is this tissue capillaries pressure drop where 40 when pressure drop 40 it means from 100 pressure will go 50 and then 40 here at the pressure of 40 yes curve is moving only this this much here it was 100 percent saturated and here it is still 75 percent saturated what does it mean you could not understand this you understand it surprise of the year now 
what we really talking that in the lungs under the pressure of 100 it was 100 percent saturated when it came to the tissue pressure has dropped to 40 it only released how much 25 percent oxygen because pressure drop from 100 to 40 but saturation drop from 100 to 75 it means now we put another parameter here content of oxygen how much was the content of oxygen here 20 ml is that right 10 ml 5 ml 0 ml now correlate all this in the lung pressure is 100 saturation is 100 content is 20 ml all of them correlated in the tissue pressure drop from 100 to 40 40 a saturation drop from 100 to 75 and content drop from 120 to 15 what does it really mean apply here pressure has dropped from 95 to 40 this is clear under that saturation will drop to 75 so three pocket will remain full and oxygen from one pocket will come out so how much percentage of oxygen will be delivered 25 percent will be delivered because 75 percent is still saturated is that right 75 percent is still saturated is that right now how much attention attention how much amount is delivered to the tissue listen listen you came with 20 ml we came with 20 ml oxygen in 100 ml of blood 25 percent is desaturated 25 percent desaturation mean release of 5 ml because originally when it came how much oxygen was carried 20 ml and when we say when it is 100 percent saturated oxygen is how much loaded 20 ml when it is 75 percent saturated how much oxygen is still loaded 15 ml so how much is deloaded 5 ml we don't need sherlock home to answer it it's very easy right that when saturation is 100 percent content is 20 ml when saturation is 75 percent content remain 15 and how much is lost 5 ml so how much tissue receive oxygen 5 ml is that right now we take this thing back now remember you know in normal person when you are not working hard comfortably sitting actually this curve is operating lung and tissue 100 to 75 percent saturation and again going back to here this part of the curve is left for emergency like sphere exercise right because we will talk about that later now let's come back now you have to tell me here what is happening just as a revision this is the hemoglobin molecule yes partial pressure at entry was how much 95 or 100 approximately at exit what is the partial pressure 40 what is the saturation in the beginning about about 100 percent approximately truly 97 percent and what is the saturation on the way out 75 percent what is the content in the beginning 20 ml what is the content in the end 15 ml so we can say out of four pocket one two three are full one has come out Five. out of 20 ml how much is delivered to the tissue 5 ml now you take this blood to what is this venous side now I'll put 100 ml blood going back now you will tell me characteristics of this blood blood this is a venous blood going to the right heart if you tell all the characteristics of this I will be proud of you right and you should be proud of yourself as well this blood going back what is the partial pressure here now partial pressure of oxygen is 40 millimeter of mercury what is the dissolved oxygen I have not told you so you will make a mistake but anyway dissolved oxygen here was 0.3 here it become 0.12 and what is the percent saturation of hemoglobin yes 75 percent and what is the content 15 ml of oxygen is that right so now I will repeat all this in one going and you have to see do you understand it or not if you don't understand don't worry stop me immediately
right? You start from here and you have to see, do you really understand this medical terminology and language and concept or not? When blood comes from right heart to the lungs, this deoxygenated blood which is coming, so called deoxygenated blood is not fully deoxygenated. So mixed venous blood from the right heart coming to the pulmonary capillaries, it has a partial pressure of oxygen 40. It has a under the partial pressure of 40 millimeter of mercury, it is having hemoglobin which is saturated up to 75 percent and its content of hemoglobin if uh, a, if hemoglobin is 15 grams per 100 ml then content of oxygen totally is 15 ml right pressure is 40 saturation is 75 percent content is 15 ml when it is passing from here what are the changes Pressure from 40 goes to 100, saturation from 75 go to approximately 100 and content from 15 ml per 100. <laughs> you are going too fast, I am slow. <laughs> you are young brains, you know. Uh, content from 15 ml oxygen per 100 ml is going to approximately 20 ml per 100 ml. Is that right? As it is going forward, there is a little naughty thing here. What is that naughty thing? That some bronchial venous blood mix there and drop the pressure a little and drop the saturation a little. Don't mess much there. Come back. When arterial blood is coming to the capillaries, what is the pressures? About 95. What is the saturation? 97. What is the content? 20 ml. Right? Here, when it comes into tissue, what is the pressure of oxygen in tissue? 40. So, what is the pressure of the dissolved? because oxygen shift so pressure of dissolved oxygen drop from 95 to 40 and saturation which was originally 97 dropped to 75 and content which was 20 dropped to 15 and how much amount of oxygen is delivered 5 oh my god you are so good okay why don't we talk about that in a person who is resting comfortably how much oxygen is delivered to tissue every minute? All tissues of the body. Listen, it's very easy to understand. 100 ml blood has delivers how much oxygen to the tissues? 5 ml. Are you understanding? 100 ml blood when it passes through the capillaries, it delivers how much oxygen? 5 ml under resting circumstance. Now, 1000 ml will transfer how much? 50 ml. Thank you. Your mathematics is good. And 5000 ml blood per minute will deliver how much oxygen? 250 ml. What is the cardiac output every minute? 5000 ml. So right now, your left ventricle is pumping how much oxygenated blood to your tissues? 5 liter per minute. Right now, your left ventricle is pumping how much blood to the tissues? 5 liter. You know, cardiac output is 5 liter. So, if your cardiac output is 5 liter, then every 100 ml of the blood gives 5 ml. Then 5 liter of blood gives how much oxygen to tissue? 250 ml. So, this is the oxygen consumption when you are resting. Out of this, most of the oxygen is bound with hemoglobin. Very little going as dissolved oxygen. Am I clear? There is no question up to this. Is that right? Another thing which is very important now. During exercise, what really happens? When you are doing too much exercise, strenuous exercise, tissue need less oxygen or more oxygen? More. So, how more oxygen is supplied to the tissues? We will talk about that tomorrow. Let us make the break now. Now, I will explain in detail the hemoglobin, oxygen, saturation or hemoglobin, oxygen, association, dissociation curve, right, in detail properly. Let us suppose that here we put partial pressure of oxygen and here we put percentage of hemoglobin which is oxygenated, that is percentage hemoglobin saturation. Now, 
let's suppose that we do an experiment that in a container we have put oxygen uh, hemoglobin here in the solution form right and here is oxygen and with a piston we are progressively now with this piston if we change the pressure then loading of oxygen on the hemoglobin molecule changes for example if you increase the pressure here more oxygen will be bound to hemoglobin and if you decrease the pressure here less oxygen will be bound with the hemoglobin it means that when you increase the pressure saturation saturated hemoglobin increases when you decrease the pressure desaturation occur is that right or another term is when you increase the pressure association develop association between hemoglobin and oxygen and when you decrease the pressure dissociation develops between the hemoglobin and oxygen right now let's suppose we study it step by step as i told you previously that this is a sigmoid curve it is not a straight linear curve right now what does it mean that at pressure of 100 the saturation is approximately 100 right but when you keep on decreasing the pressure is that right saturation keep on decreasing but in early part you can see we are decreasing the pressure but saturation is decreasing very little for example when you decrease the pressure from 100 to 50 right it means that from this point of the curve at pressure of 50 it is here now you can see that originally saturation was 100 at the pressure of 100 and at the pressure of 50 still saturation is 85 percent is that clear then you further drop it let's suppose to 40 right it is 50 percent saturation here and here it is suppose 75 percent saturation at the pressure of 40 there is 75 percent saturation now what we really see that in upper part curve has two part the upper part of the curve and lower part of the curve at high pressure curve is flat relatively flat and at lower pressure it is relatively steep again this curve is at higher pressure it is somewhat flat and at lower pressure it is steep right when curve is flat it means that when you drop from 100 to 50 when you drop the pressure from 100 to 50 only 15 percent hemoglobin is dissociated and 85 percent remains associated or saturated but pressure from 50 is further dropped up to zero then saturation drop from 85 to zero it means that when pressures are operating at high level hemoglobin loves to hold oxygen and when pressures are operating at lower level hemoglobin loves to deliver oxygen is that right now in our body what are the normal functioning normal functioning is between 100 and 40 because pressure in the lung is partial pressure in the lung is 100 and partial pressure in the tissues is when tissues are resting is 40 and at the 40 saturation is 75 it means that when curve is operating like this physiologically that as blood moves from the lungs to the tissue this part of the curve is utilized is that right and when we go back from the tissue to blood goes back from the tissues to the lungs curve is working like this right and if you draw the content here it was 20 ml content if hemoglobin was 15 gram under the pressure of 100 right and when pressure was 40 okay remove this 50 because 40 is physiologically more important point when pressure was 40 
then saturation was 75 and content was 15 ml so first point which a good student should know what is normal physiological part of the curve which is right now happening in a resting student right that from the lungs up to the tissue right pressure drop from 100 to 40 saturation drop from 100 to 75 content drop from 20 ml to 15 ml when blood goes back to the lungs pressure raised from 40 to 100 saturation increase from 75 to 100 content of oxygen in 100 ml of blood move from 15 ml to 20 this is the normal now we talk about someone who is doing severe exercise what really happens actually when you are doing exercise number one your cardiac output increases and under severe exercise if you are a healthy person your cardiac output can increase six to seven times what is normal your cardiac output five liter per minute if your cardiac output increase six times if your cardiovascular system is healthy heart can take cardiac output up to six times more so your cardiac output increase from five liter per minute to 30 liter per minute it means in a one minute every tissue is getting blood supply how many times more six times more and then exercising tissue specially dilated arterioles so there out of proportion there is increase in blood supply so during exercise one way to provide extra oxygen to the tissue is simply by increasing the cardiac output that when cardiac output is more more blood is going to the tissue then there is another thing that when you are doing severe exercise extraneous exercise the utilization of oxygen is very rapid in the tissues and in the, within the tissue oxygen partial pressure dramatically fall we have been discussing that resting tissue has a partial pressure of 40 but when you are doing very severe exercise partial pressure of oxygen within the tissue due to rapid utilization of oxygen in the tissue partial pressure of oxygen within the tissue will drop from 40 maybe up to 15 and now you look at it if partial pressure of oxygen in extremely exercising muscle is 15 then oxygen saturation remains maybe 10 what does it mean that 90 percent of oxygen is delivered to the tissues so it means this part of the curve now in exercising person this will further go down and a large amount of oxygen will be released to the tissues so this part of the curve operates when there is excessive extra need of oxygen right in normal situation saturation drop from 100 to 75 right so it means 25 percent oxygen is delivered but in exercising person arterial blood bring 100 percent saturation but it drop up to 10% it means 90% of the oxygen may be delivered to the tissue 90% of the oxygen mean that content which was 20 ml maybe 18 ml is delivered and only 2 ml is left so this is one another way how we increase the oxygen supply to the exercising muscles so exercising muscles get extra oxygen number one by increased cardiac output the total blood flow is increased secondly due to dropped oxygen pressure in exercising muscle they extract out of proportion extra oxygen out of hemoglobin am i clear then there is one more phenomenon what is that let me explain that thing that is phenomenon explain later first you understand one thing there is a concept we say there's a right shift of the curve and there's left shift of the curve what is the meaning of right shift of the curve or left shift of the curves first of all we should make a concept of p50 who will tell me what is p50 
P50 is the pressure, partial pressure of oxygen. Write it down. P50 is the partial pressure of oxygen at which 50% of hemoglobin is saturated and 50% is desaturated. Is that right? What is P50? P50 is the partial pressure of oxygen at which half of the hemoglobin is saturated and half of it is desaturated. Now listen. In the normal curve, suppose this is the normal curve. Normal curve, if this is the 50% saturation, now take this line. This is the 50% saturation here. 50% saturation occur at pressure of 25 millimeter of mercury. Now this is a little bit tricky concept. So use your all layers of the cortex, I mean cerebral cortex. Listen. What really happens that when hemoglobin is operating with normal affinities, affinity means its tendency to stick the oxygen. When hemoglobin is operating with the normal affinity, then when partial pressure, partial pressure of oxygen is 25 or 26, half of the hemoglobin will be saturated and half of it will be desaturated. Now again listen. Another way to state this thing is that to get the oxygen out of half of the hemoglobin, we have to drop the pressure from 100 to 25. I'm restating the same fact that if you want to get half of the oxygen out of fully saturated hemoglobin, you have to drop the pressure from 100 to 25. Because at the pressure of 25, half, of, half hemoglobin is loaded and half is deloaded. Is that right? Now, if I say that there is uh, another hemoglobin, okay, I put three hemoglobins here. This is one container. Uh, I will put a normal container first. First container, this is right container and this is left container. And all of them are having hemoglobin. All of them are having hemoglobin. First of all, we are talking about this standard hemoglobin under standard circumstances. In standard hemoglobin, we say if partial pressure is how much? 25. Is that right? How much it is saturated? 50%. And how much is desaturated? 50%. It means when you bring the pressure at 25, half of oxygen will be delivered to the tissues. Clear? Yes. Now you imagine another hemoglobin. There is hemoglobin here. We do something naughty. You know hemoglobin is a transporter of oxygen. This is a public transport on which oxygen travel. But if you put some other passengers which try to go into that car, so oxygen has to jump out. It's very natural. For example, if we have a special transport, public transport for the ladies, four-seater, and if some of these naughty boys try to push in, so what will happen to ladies? Most probably, some of them will at least jump out. Is that right? It means affinity of car for the ladies will become less. Imagine hemoglobin is a transporter of ladies. Ladies mean oxygen. If we bring some nasty other intruder, those intruder, if they try to enter into hemoglobin, maybe ladies will jump out. So delivery to the tissue will become better. Oh my God, you don't know about ladies, my friend. <laughs> Look, hemoglobin is having the ladies. Right, they are sitting, four ladies sitting comfortably and when pressure drop up to 75, only one lady jump out. Do you understand it? If we put some snake in, maybe two will jump out, maybe three. It means affinity of the hemoglobin decreases for the oxygen. oxygen. Is that right? That is good for tissue or bad for tissue? Good for tissue. Now look at tissues, how clever they are. They want ladies, oxygen. So when the hemoglobin come, 
if tissues are exercising now listen very carefully they are so clever tissue when they are exercises they start producing some snakes and those snakes jump into hemoglobin pockets and oxygen out of proportion comes out why because now affinity of hemoglobin become less is that right listen now carefully exercising muscle this is exercising muscle and this is the hemoglobin which is passing through exercising muscle <coughs> what are those nasty snakes or boys actually exercising tissue produces carbon dioxide that produces protons you know that that produces high temperature and if exercise lasts more than one hour then rbc produce a special type of snake 23 dpg what is that 23 dpg diphospho gristlet now 23 dpg now listen carefully what really happens attention please first you have to imagine that car coming with four ladies usually you drop the pressure from 100 to 75 only one lady jumps out if you provide some different insects and snake in the car more ladies will jump out is that right now you imagine not a car you imagine hemoglobin coming with four molecules of oxygen normally one oxygen molecule come out now if you put in some carbon dioxide it try to push its way into hemoglobin you know hemoglobin also transport carbon dioxide so carbon dioxide try to push its way to hemoglobin or exercising muscle not only produce carbon dioxide but the carbon dioxide which is produced that mixes with the water and produces carbonic acid and that produces protons those protons bind with hemoglobin and try to stick like an insect not only this exercising muscle produce lactic acid pyruvic acid and some other acid those acid also release protons they also like insect jump into hemoglobin modify hemoglobin so what really happens that when tissues are exercising they produce more don't tell me insects they produce more carbon dioxide they produce more protons they produce high temperature if car temperature is high would you like to jump or set ladies know they will get out so even muscles when they are exercising they are taking the temperature of the blood high or hemoglobin temperature high they are adding to the hemoglobin more protons more carbon dioxide all these factors modify the hemoglobin and make the pockets of hemoglobin little bit narrow so oxygen cannot stay in so it more there's more tendency to jump out into tissue it means under these circumstances when there is more temperature high temperature when there is more acidosis protons or when there is more carbon dioxide or when ex more than one hour exercise may produce more two three dpg all these substances you have to tell me increase the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen or decrease the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen they decrease, they decrease the affinity it means when tendency of oxygen binding with hemoglobin is reduced then at every given pressure hemoglobin will release less oxygen or more oxygen right is that right so what really happens when your blood is passing through exercising tissue the product which are produced during exercise they make the affinity of oxygen to the hemoglobin less so hemoglobin releases the oxygen more readily for every given pressure hemoglobin is less saturated for every given pressure now hemoglobin will be less saturated let's talk about pressure look for every given pressure these are the pressures if hemoglobin has to be less saturated so curve has to move downward and rightward so curve will be drawn like this let me explain exactly how look before carbon dioxide before carbon dioxide or increasing carbon dioxide increase proton of course decrease ph or increase temperature or there is increase 2 3 dpg let me tell you what is the mechanism of dpg you know there were tails alpha chains and beta chains dpg 2 3 dpg hold if i'm 2 2 3 dpg i will hold two chains of beta chains and cross link so what is the function of 2 3 dpg 
it binds with the beta chains of hemoglobin beta globin of the hemoglobin and cross link so pockets become wide or narrow narrow when pockets are narrow oxygen will stay or jump out jump out is that right clear and here's another important thing you know fetal hemoglobin does not have beta chain it has gamma chain so it means their pockets remain wide or narrow wide because fetal hemoglobin does not have beta chain so 2 3 dpg cannot cross link their chains so fetal chain has deep and wide pockets so fetal hemoglobin has more affinity to bind oxygen and advantage is when he, he fetal hemoglobin passes through placenta it has more affinity for oxygen it snatches away oxygen from internal circulation that is the advantage of fetal hemoglobin that is why fetus produces not adult hemoglobin is that right anyway let's come back so what really happens look when curve is shifted to the right why it is shifted to the right because now hemoglobin has less affinity for oxygen so it more readily delivers oxygen for every given pressure it has less saturation for example let's come to the pressure of 40 you know at the pressure of 40 normally there was saturation up to what 75 now there is saturation of maybe what is this 50 or even saturation at the pressure of 40 it will go like this this is the 40 normally when this is the normal curve this is right shifted curve is that right normal curve at the pressure of 40 saturation is about 75 so how much is delivered 25 percent oxygen but when curve shift to the right then pressure of the 40 saturation is 50 percent it means how much it will deliver yeah 50 percent it means when this curve shift to the right then at the partial pressure of 40 rather than releasing 5 ml it will release 10 ml so it become better dissociator and better deliverer to the tissues am i clear to you you are understanding that good opposite to that if we another thing this was p50 you remember for normal p50 was 25 millimeter of mercury at 25 millimeter of mercury half was saturated half was desaturated now p50 is 40 that right shifted curve has 50 percent saturation at what pressure 40 it means right shifted curve delivers 50 percent oxygen at higher pressure it means it is a better dissociator better donor is that right am i clear now we come to another thing let's suppose if carbon dioxide become less protons become less less than normal temperature is cold 2 3 dpg is very less or there is fetal hemoglobin uh, fetal hemoglobin right when all these things are less it means hemoglobin is not having other disturbances carbon dioxide not is not disturbing the hemoglobin protons are not disturbing the hemoglobin temperature is not disturbing the hemoglobin ladies will remain sitting or they will jump out yeah they remain sitting they don't want to dissociate so we say car has more affinity for the ladies so that will be good delivery or bad delivery bad delivery right bad delivery means that for every given pressure there will be more saturation and less desaturation for every given pressure there will be less oxygen released it means there will be less less desaturated hemoglobin in that case curve will behave like this look now you imagine here in this case what is happening to get the 50 percent desaturation you have to drop the pressure 100 to maybe 5 imagine in normal pay normal case this is the normal case this is 50 percent saturation is that right in normal case 50 percent desaturation or saturation is at what pressure 25 it means normal hemoglobin you have to drop the pressure from 100 to 25 
to get 50% oxygen delivered. In right shifted case, you drop just from 100 to 40 and you get 50% oxygen. But in left shifted case, you, you have to drop from 100 to 5 to get it 50% delivery. It means right shifted curve is better donor and left shifted curve is better retainer, poor donor. Is that right? Now, next time when you remember that when the curve should shift to the right, when there is should be better donor. When there should be better donor? When you are doing exercise. So exercise you produce temperature. It will shift it to the right. You produce protons, acidic, shift to the right. You produce carbon dioxide, shift to the right. And exercise more than one hour or hypoxia long term as you go to high altitude. Right, that produces 2-3 dpg. That cross links the pockets and again it produces more delivery. Am I clear? Now what are the things we shift the curve to the left? Of course all things opposite to that. Low carbon dioxide, low protons, low temperature, low 2-3 dpg. For example in stored blood, when you store the blood in blood bank, 2-3 dpg may be disintegrated. Then stored blood, when you give it to some person, st st uh, the hemoglobin in stored blood may bind the oxygen well, but may release oxygen slightly poorly. Is that right? And fetal hemoglobin also. Now you, you tell me the factors which are shifting to left side. Yes. Low temperature, low proton, that is alkalosis, low carbon dioxide, very good, to low 2, 3 dp, G and fetal hemoglobin which is fetal and <coughs> stored blood which has low 2, 3 dpg. Now another thing, here we just talk about shift to the right and shift to the left. In one sentence you can say when shift to the right is there then there is reduced affinity and when shift to the left is there there is increased affinity. Of course for the tissue of hemoglobin with less affinity is better because that will release better. Am I clear? Another way to compare these things is P50. What is P50? P50 is the pressure at which 50% of hemoglobin is desaturated. Normally P50 is normal hemoglobin is operating P50 at 25. So it means in normal hemoglobin pressure has to be dropped from 100 to 25 to get the oxygen out of 50% of hemoglobin. When there is shift to the right, P50 is more and when at higher pressure and when shift uh, curve shift to the left, P50 become less. Am I clear? Now we will also see what happens to this curve when there is anemia or polycythemia. Look, this was a person with normal hemoglobin. What was his hemoglobin? 15 gram per dl. Is that right? Let us suppose due to some reason your hemoglobin level become 18 grams. If your hemoglobin levels become more, your capacity to hold oxygen is less or more? More. So it means curve will move now upward. So actually in polycythemia, a condition in which there is polycythemia. Polycythemia means increased hemoglobin, right? When you have polycythemia, upper end of the curve will move upward. Moving upward shows that capacity, total capacity to hold oxygen is in, increased. Opposite to that, if someone has hemoglobin only 10 gram, can he hold 20 ml oxygen? No. So his total capability to hold, right? Let me draw it separately. Suppose this is the normal curve, right? In polycythemia, this curve will move upward. More capacity on the arterial blood to hold oxygen. And in anemia, it will move downward. Is that right? How you make this concept? Because here you put the content of oxygen. Normally, content of oxygen is 20 ml when hemoglobin is 15 grams, 100% saturated. If hemoglobin is less, then of course, total it can never achieve the normal content. And if hemoglobin amount is more, then it can achieve more. Another way to discuss is that in a container, 
you have blood with 100 ml blood with 15 gram of hemoglobin if you add more hemoglobin it will go up and out of 15 gram if you remove 5 gram hemoglobin under the same pressure it will hold less oxygen no problem here there were three containers this container was central normal curve when curve shift to the this side you have added these things right and it will release more oxygen if you remove these things it will release less oxygen this is shifted to the and this is shifted to the left i'm just doing some acrobatics with your mind now we come to the last thing where students are usually lost what happens when carbon monoxide poisoning is there is that right right that is very simple to understand yes no right p50 remain the same because look p50 is normally where 25 it remain the same right because this has to be at 25 it will be half saturated desaturated and half saturated at 25 this will be half saturated desaturated at 25 it will be half saturated desaturated actually this curve should go like this is that right so all of them will be still in line p50 does not change listen if you have a container with 20 milligram uh, 20 grams of hemoglobin right if other carbon dioxide and protons and temperature and 2 3 dpg level does not change then if you increase hemoglobin or decrease hemoglobin 50 percent saturation remain at the same pressure is that right okay let's come back uh, what we were talking about what happens on carbon monoxide poisoning one thing you have to remember carbon monoxide has 250 times more affinity to bind with the hemoglobin as compared to oxygen so it means carbon monoxide is very very sticky to hemoglobin it is very very sticky to hemoglobin is that right now what happens let's suppose these are the four pockets let's suppose oxygen oxygen two pockets are full an attack of carbon monoxide come here is now carbon monoxide sitting this is carbon monoxide sitting here and here two pockets are loaded with carbon monoxide can oxygen come here this is problem number one the some pockets are occupied by carbon dioxide and oxygen cannot come there it means for oxygen transport purpose these sites are wasted so it means total capability of blood after the exposure to carbon monoxide the total capacity of blood to hold oxygen is increased or decreased it has decreased secondly when carbon monoxide come here it makes these pockets altered these pockets become like this so they don't allow the oxygen to go out so it is just like this that the four pockets two pockets are loaded by carbon monoxide and oxygen cannot come there a remaining two pocket where oxygen is there they are altered in such a way that oxygen cannot go out it means for empty pocket oxygen cannot come in in full pocket oxygen cannot go out it is just like that a rascal or a, 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 some rascal standing on the main gate of your house it does not allow the people to come in it does not allow you to go out that is what is carbon monoxide so what will be the effect on this curve normal curve is like this number one whatever oxygen is there can it go out no it means hemoglobin that part of the hemoglobin which is loaded with oxygen its affinity for oxygen is less or more listen attention we can divide the hemoglobin in two part one hemoglobin one part of the hemoglobin which is loaded by carbon dioxide other part of the hemoglobin which is loaded with oxygen but it is not willing to release oxygen it is just functional pockets is that right so in the presence of carbon dioxide oxygen loaded pockets become more sticky to oxygen now do you think uh, affinity of this part of hemoglobin is more for oxygen or less for oxygen more for oxygen so curve will shift to the left or right to the left so what really happens with carbon monoxide poisoning number one problem is 
that curve shift to the this left number two can it ever receive the fully loaded no so it will never go this was the full loading this is a half loading so what really happens there are two changes in the curve that when hemoglobin is exposed to carbon monoxide number one curve shift to the left it means whatever oxygen could be delivered is difficult to deliver right secondly the pocket where carbon monoxide is loaded they can never be filled now with ox oxygen even if you increase the pressure of oxygen you cannot get enough what enough content so after carbon monoxide poisoning hemoglobin is chained number one some sites are not willing to take the oxygen and transport oxygen so total capacity of the blood to transport oxygen is reduced and content of oxygen is also reduced number two whatever some oxygen is present with the hemoglobin that is difficult to deliver right so in a way there is a major problem that blood cannot transport oxygen enough and whatever oxygen is really with the hemoglobin that cannot be released to the tissue is that right so curve is shifted to the left because it cannot release the oxygen whatever it has and it turned downward because it can never get fully saturated these two pockets which are altered after carbon monoxide poisoning they are having increased affinity for oxygen are responsible to shifting the curve to the left and these two pockets which are loaded with carbon monoxide and oxygen cannot bind here they are responsible for moving it down how do you treat carbon monoxide poisoning first of all you should stop the source of carbon monoxide and remove the patient right secondly if possible you have to give high concentration of oxygen and under very high concentration of oxygen some of the carbon monoxide may be displaced but it is very difficult because carbon monoxide is very 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 sticky number two we give five percent carbon dioxide what carbon dioxide will do to the patient who is poisoned with carbon monoxide and still alive carbon dioxide will stimulate respiratory center so patient will hyperventilate and when he will hyperventilate a lot he will rapidly bring out the carbon dioxide wash out of his lung am i clear any question up to this class dismissed